presenting an unusual story of love and mystery on Front Page Detective. Starring Mr. Edmund Lowe as the famed newspaper columnist and amateur detective David Chase. And now for another thrilling adventure as we accompany David Chase and watch him match wits with those who would take the law into their own hands. In these days of crime probes and Senate investigating committees, a newspaper man never knows where his next front page story will come from. Here in New York or out of town. Take Big Dutch Oliver over there, the big fellow. He used to be boss of the rackets, but for all his millions, he's in a terrific spot. He's on his way to Washington with a Senate subpoena in his pocket. And if he refuses to tell all, he'll be in contempt of Congress. But if he does decide to talk, a former gangland pal may try to stop him the hard way. That's why Big Dutch has his personal torpedo with him, Danny Trumpet, the lad over there with the bow tie. Look, Dutch, you sure it's okay to leave you alone while I go back after the big bag? <laughs> What's the matter, Danny? You think I'm not old enough to take care of myself? Sure, run along, but hurry back. We pull out in ten minutes. Yeah, uh, okay. Uh-oh. Speaking of explosives, notice the gentleman with the gorgeous blonde. That's Mr. Dynamite in person, otherwise known as Rocco Valenti. The former gangland pal voted most likely to get hurt if Big Dutch Oliver testifies. Just as I hinted in my column, Valenti is riding this same train to Washington, which may spell fireworks before the trip Mr. is over. David Chase, paging Mr. David Chase. David Chase, please report to station master's office. An urgent telephone call. Hello, this is David Chase. What's so urgent? Who's calling? Never mind who I am, Chase. Just listen to me and listen good. It's a matter of life or death. Your life or your death. What? That valley in your column today, Chase, about them Washington big shots digging into the racket tycoons. It ain't healthy to hit what you hated. Hey, wait a minute now. And it won't be healthy if you ride on that train tonight. Don't get with it, Chase. The setup's gonna be gaffed. You can't win for losing. Could I have a translation of that? It means stay off that train or you may have a star back seat to your own funeral. Hey, wait a minute. Hold on. Midnight Express leaving in five minutes for Trenton, Philadelphia, Baltimore, and Washington. <laughs> It's a cinch the guy who phoned me didn't know his newspaper men. Where the news goes, we go. And from the look of things, this trip south had all the makings of a headline homicide. I can't help thinking about Rocco Valenti and that blonde Venus. Somehow I have a feeling I'll, I'll be seeing him again before very long. Well... How do you do? I know you must be busy, Mr. Chase, but... Whatever gave you that idea? I'm never too busy for visitors like you. Won't you uh, sit down, Miss... Uh... Thank you. Gerard. Vicky Gerard. Oh, that's a lovely name for a lovely girl. <laughs> I'll bet you always say that. Well, not always. Once I met a redhead by the name of Saparina Finnebessy. <laughs> oh, Mr. Chase. That's a fact. That was only a married name. Her maiden name was Pokinghorn. Oh, will you have a cigarette? Well, I really shouldn't, but... Oh, it's fine. You're very lovely. You're lovely. I guess all newspaper people smoke too much. Don't you think so, Mr. Chase? Are you a newspaper woman, Vicky? <laughs> yes. I'm on the Long Island Star Clarion. Of course, it's just a little twice-a-week paper. <laughs> I see. That's what I wanted to talk to you about, Mr. Chase. I thought maybe... Really, I... I just don't know how to start. You're doing fine. Well, what I mean is... You're so experienced in everything. Oh, thank you. Well, you know all about deadlines and... Bulldog editions and linotype editors. I thought maybe you could give me a few pointers on... What a girl needs to be a success. Pointers? Oh, yes, yes, of course, pointers. Uh, uh, you can't get to first base without them, huh? I knew you'd understand. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, for instance, the Star Bulletin sending little inexperienced me down to Washington. Star Bulletin? But you said your paper was the Star Clarion. Oh, I meant the Star Clarion. Oh, I well, see. How 
can they expect a cub reporter like me to understand all about that Senate investigation? Unless, of course, I could find someone like you to teach me how to do it. Mm, honey, I'd like to teach you everything I know. Where shall we begin, huh? Well, take your column in today's paper. Must we? I mean, what you said about some underworld tycoon having to testify and one of his pals wanting to stop him the hard way. Who did you mean? You really want to know? Mm-hmm. What's that word if I tell you? Maybe this. What's it worth to Rocco Looney? I beg your pardon. Oh, come now, kitten. We both know that Valenti sent you to pump me. Well, you're not a cub reporter. You're in the front line of the Copa Club. Of all the cheap, low-down chiselers, stringing me along and letting me make a fool of myself. Oh, no, Vicky, you mustn't lose your temper. You're too gorgeous to get ulcers. You, you contemptible creep. I still think you're pretty. Eight or ten paragraphs later, I started thinking of the old saying, never send a boy on a man's errand. That applied to girls, too. Even girls like Vicki Gerard. She hadn't got the information Valenti wanted. So next time, I figured Valenti would come himself. And sure enough. Come in, Valenti. Sorry I didn't hear you knock. Did you bring Vicky back with you? I'm alone, mister. It's just you and me. Oh, that's too bad. She's a nice kid. Well, what can I do for you? Maybe I can do something for you. No, thanks. I've lost some of my closest friends that way, if I understand what you mean. You understand, all right. Or else you're a better actor than you are a newspaper man. <laughs> you're one of my first critics that ever admitted it. Oh, uh, what was it you wanted that made you bring that little persuader with you? Persuader? You got me wrong, Chase. I don't go for violence. Surprise! <laughs> it's so... violent. No, I was just curious about what you said in tonight's column. You know, about this former pal of mine who's gonna try and stop me from testifying down in Washington. Stop you? You... Pardon me, I... I dropped a little ash off my cigarette. Uh, what were you saying? I want to know, is that item you wrote straight from the feed box? So the feed box claimed. Then this former pal of mine who's going to make with the fireworks. Who is the guy? Is he on this train? Oh, come now. You wouldn't want me to violate a confidence, would you? What's the name of the guy? And where did you get the dope? Uh-uh. If I revealed the source, I'd be tossed right out of the union. Oh, uh, I've got a light, thanks. Not like this, you ain't. This kind is hot enough to burn you down if you won't talk. If it burned me down, I couldn't talk. Oh, put that away, Valenti. You're in way over your head. Look, if a guy on this train is gunning for me, I got a right to know. It ain't my fault Washington sent me a summons. Go on. The last summons you got was in 1947, when you were witnessing that Goldstein killing. You know they're checking up on all the big operators, Chase. Yeah. Does this look like an invitation to a barbecue? That might be that. You still think someone's going to put me on the spot, eh? Only you won't tell me who. Not who. Who? Okay. So you're educated. So clam up. Maybe someday you'll need a favor. Try and get it. One other thing, sweetheart. Lay off calling me a tycoon. Some of my boys gave me a funny look when they read it. Well, this was the switch of the year. The wise money said Big Dutch Oliver's testimony would hurt Rocco Valenti. The wise money said Valenti would try to stop Oliver from giving that testimony. How long could the wise money be? What we all overlooked was that Valenti could be subpoenaed too, and somebody might want to stop him from talking. was in the air. 
So I followed my nose to Dutch Oliver's drawing room in the next Pullman. Who is it? It's David Chase. Open up, trumpet. I want to talk to Big Dutch a minute. You got the wrong place. Nobody here by that name. Don't be coy, Danny. I saw you and Dutch get aboard an hour ago. What's the matter? You nervous? You got some enemies? Let him in, Danny. Chase is okay. Hiya, Dutch. Hiya, Chase. Have a seat. What's on your mind? Don't scare me like that, will you? Lay off, Danny. That's no way to treat the press. Uh, I know, boss. But you can't afford Skip to take it. chances. Chase knocks off his enemies with his typewriter, eh, Chase? <laughs> well, it's good to start this off with a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on, sit down. Thanks. Besides, Chase is a friend. Yeah, a friend who's worried about your health, Dutch. My health? Never felt better in my life. In the midst of life, we are in death, end quote. Riddles he makes with. You sound like an advance agent for Gloomy Sunday. How come? One of your pals is aboard, one of your former pals. Valenti? Uh-huh, he paid me a little visit a few minutes ago. Boss, I told you not to... Quiet, Danny. Valenti's worried, Dutch. <laughs> and why not? He'll be singing solo tomorrow. No mouthpiece to help him over the rough spots. Oh, you know about his subpoena, huh? Oh, sure. He even phoned me. Thought we might take a trip south. I told him no dice. I got nothing to hide. I'm clean. Been clean for three years. Danny's seen to that, haven't you, Danny? That I have, boss. And if Valenti isn't clean, that's his funeral. Well, maybe he thinks yours might help the situation. If anything happens to me, the joke's on him. I'll have the last laugh. <laughs> now who makes with the riddles? Look, Chase, I'm going to let you in on something. Hey, Danny, better take a gander through the train. If you spot that friend of ours, keep an eye on him. <laughs> but don't start anything. Look, I got a feeling I shouldn't. When the heat's on like now, you shouldn't trust even your... your friends. Danny, you're too jittery. Chase won't hurt anybody. If it'll make you feel any better, take another look around the room. Come on, check the closet. And uh, don't forget to look under the mattress. The mattress is out in the corridor. Uh... Well, go on, blow. Find Valenti and keep an eye on him. Don't forget to lock it. This is my insurance policy. I'm going to let you hear part of it. Because of these and other threats during the past few days, I've taken the precaution of making this recorded transcript of the information I intend to present. If anything or anybody should stop me from testifying in person before this committee, then this detailed record in my own voice will... Like I said, Chase, I'll have the last laugh. <laughs> yeah, I see what you mean. Not wishing you any bad luck, Dutch, but oh boy, what a story that would make. Well, not wishing you any bad luck. I hope you never get a chance to write it. Well, I'll go along with you, but I can dream, can't I? <laughs> Why waste your time? Truth is, I'm safer here than lots of places I can think of. And Danny Trumpet's plenty quick on the trigger if anybody wants to make trouble. Yeah, <laughs> so I gather. Tell me, Dutch, off the record, are you really packing enough dynamite to blow the lid off tomorrow? I'll put it this way. I'm going to protect myself in the clinches. If anybody else's testimony puts me on a spot, I'm going to get off. Believe me. Mm-hmm. No matter who you involve, huh? That's right, Chase. No matter who I involve. I haven't got as much to lose as Valenti. And I think he's smart enough to keep that in mind. Even the smart ones can make mistakes. Well, I'll mosey along. I've got words to put on paper. Make sure they're the right words, Chase. Don't lead with your chin. My chin doesn't worry me. It's my nose. It gets very sensitive when it smells a story like this. <laughs> And as Danny would say, be sure it's locked. Vicky, what? I want to take. Dutch, what is it? Dutch, Dutch, are you all right? Dutch, Dutch. Maybe 
this was what that character meant when he phoned me at the station master's office, when he warned me to stay off this train. Maybe I was taking a ride to my own funeral. Hey, boss, I couldn't... Oh. Hey. Hey, Dutch. Dutch! Hey, he'll never be deader. Someone plugged him in the back. Somebody. Meaning... Meaning you. Dirty, low down heel. So you waited till I was gone, huh? You knew Big Dutch trusted you enough to turn his back, and then you chopped him down. Don't be a fool, Danny. How much blood money will Eddie pay you to kill him? I tell you I didn't kill him, you know that. What did Big Dutch know you didn't want to be told down in Washington? Come on, talk! I'll talk when you stop acting like a maniac. You'll talk now or I'll blow your lights out. Oh. Why, you blew out I his... didn't kill Oliver, I tell you. You're lying, Chase. You're lying in your teeth. Oh. Oh, no. No, you didn't kill him. But he's dead. And you was in here alone with him. Not when it happened. No? Then who was? That's the crazy part of it. No one. No one? You trying to tell me he shot himself in the back? Why, you... I didn't say that. I said there was nobody with him. It happened when I left him. I was walking down the corridor. Before Dutch had a chance to lock the door, I heard a shot. I ran back here and found him dead. Dead and alone. Who are you fronting for, Chase? Yourself or Valenti? I could ask you that same question, Danny. Meaning what? You were told to keep an eye on Valenti. Why did you come back here instead? I couldn't find him. Too bad you didn't. Big Dutch might still be alive. How could Valenti have done it if it happened like you said? Yeah, he's a fast man with a gun, but he ain't that fast. He couldn't just up and disappear. Nobody can. Well, somebody did. And if somebody could do a disappearing act, that same somebody might reappear just as easily. Who are you trying to kid? Oh, no, Chase, I won't buy that. Not unless you can show me how Valenti worked it. Why don't you ask him? He's right behind you. <laughs> no, you don't think I'm dope enough to fall for that old routine? Why, I ought to bash Hold you. It, Danny. Drop the heat, sonny boy. I got you faded. No, no, Chase. You wouldn't want to commit suicide, would you? Not so soon after I stopped your pal here from dealing you a fractured skull. Can I help it if I'm impulsive? Looks like you're having too many impulses tonight. All of them bad for your health. You can turn around now, Danny. Now, what was that question Chase was telling you to ask me? Something about how did I work it? Work what? Hey. Where's Big Dutch? Like you didn't know, huh? What Danny means is, how did you manage to disappear after you pulled the killing? Killing? What killing? Big Dutch Oliver. Chase says you're the guy knocked him off. Knocked him off? Yeah. That's right. Knocked him off. Now listen, let's not overdo the surprise act. Is this guy out of his head or something? What's the joke? So I can laugh too. If it was a joke, it wasn't very funny to Big Dutch Oliver. Does that look like he died laughing? Hey, you weren't kidding. He really is dead. Now, Danny! Uh, looks like you're the one that's faded now, big shot. Okay, you can let him go, Chase. And get your hands up. You heard what the man said? Get your hands up. That's what the man said. Yeah, and I said it to you too, Chase. Up! Me? What? Yeah, I said up! Now, keep him there. I don't get it. Whose team are you on? Big Dutch Oliver's, and that's the way it's gonna ride till I find out which one of you two lice killed him. It wasn't me. Get that through your head, punk. Whoever blasted him, it wasn't me. But uh, between us, we could fix it so Chase would take the fall. The hands, Buster. Keep them high. Higher! Now, now, what was you saying? Look, I came here to have a little talk with Big Dutch. Maybe make a deal with him. Yeah, a 38 caliber deal. Maybe we can talk business. I got a big organization. I could fit you into one of the top spots. Don't you see, Danny, the more he tries to sell you a bill of goods, the more he proves he's scared. Scared that you realize he's the only person who could have killed Dutch Oliver. Why don't you plug him? We could tell the cops he confessed and he tried to make a break for it. And then you had to let him have it. I'll back you up. And he'll be too dead to deny anything. If I thought Chase killed Dutch, I... Don't do it, Danny. Don't do it, I tell you. 
You can't take the law in your own hands. Oh, it's all very well to be loyal to Dutch, to want revenge, but you can't be the judge, jury, and the executioner. That belongs to the police. Use your head. Now, look, Danny, you're in the clear. I'll testify you weren't in this room when it happened. You know I didn't do it because I didn't have any gun. You frisked me when I came into the room, remember? So who's left? Whose gun did you take away? Who's the only one who had a motive? Turn him over to the conductor, Danny. Have him locked up until we get to Baltimore. We'll be due there in 15 minutes. We can wire ahead and have a reception committee waiting. That's what Dutch would want you to do. Maybe you're right, Chase. But I ain't all the way sold on you. All right, I'll go along when you turn Valenti in. Now, does that convince you that I'm leveling? Well, you sound on the level. All right, it's a deal. I ain't got nothing to lose. Come on, Valenti. You're making a mistake, punk. Go on. You too. Oh, you can drop him. You know, they tell me the cops in Baltimore really know their stuff, huh? Yeah, they get pretty good convictions, too. The saber in Maryland. That means hanging. Yeah. That's a show I gotta see. From a star back seat. Hold it, Valenti. Hey! Hey, what gives? Chase! Chase! Open up! Star back seat, 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 star back seat. Could I have a translation of that? It means stay off that train or you may have a star back seat to your own funeral. Star back seat, 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 star back seat. Chase, open up or I'll blast you through the door. Not a chance, Danny. I know all the answers now. The mystery of the locked room isn't the mystery anymore, it's in the bag. Unlock the door, Chase. Let my brother in. I knew that would bring you out of the bag. So you're Danny's brother, the midget, huh? Surprise? Not a bit. I knew the murderer couldn't have left this room. You ain't that smart, Chase. You had something else to go on. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, I had. When you phoned me at the station, you used a lot of circus lingo. You mentioned star back seat, which means the reserve seats in the big top. Now, when I heard Danny use those same words just now, I knew he was in on the deal. He had a circus background, too. And in every circus, you can always find midgets. Well, he threatened us. He made Danny do all his dirty work. Mm-hmm. So Dutch had enough on you and your brother to send you to the hot seat anytime, didn't he? I wanted to protect Danny. I see. Then this train trip was a perfect setup to kill him. You'd both beat the rap by framing Valenti or me when I horned in. I warned you to keep away. You know too much. Now you gotta die, like he died. But he didn't die. They thought I was dead until I came back from Florida a month later. Chase, turn that light on. Turn it on or I'll burn you down. You can't see in the dark, you don't know where to shoot. Missed me both times, little man. It's a six gun. I've got four more tries. Only three. You forgot the bullet you used on Big Dutch. That's the best slug I ever spent. You're running low, little man. Only one left. That's all I need, if it's the big one. Open this door, come out. I said open the door, come out, or I'll come in shooting. brother. That uniform looks as good as the Army, Navy, and Marines all rolled into one, especially that thing you got in your hand. What do you mean, Chase? What are you trying to give me? Two killers, the gun that killed Big Dutch Oliver, signed, sealed, and delivered. Looks like I'm in the clear, huh? For Big Dutch Oliver's murder, yes. But, oh, brother, wait till you hear that recording. You got the surprise of your life, believe me. All right, take them away, Doctor. They're all yours. All right, boys, let's take a walk. Well, baby, you certainly got yourself mixed up with a lot of nice playmates, didn't you? Yes, I see that now. I guess I knew Rocco wasn't exactly on the right side of the law. Yeah, you can say that again. Believe me, I didn't know he was in that deep. Up to here. Mr. Chase, I wasn't exactly kidding about that newspaper work. You weren't? Well, sometimes it gets exciting. 
Suppose we dig up a pencil and paper. I'll teach you some more tricks about the newspaper game. For another exciting mystery, read Front Page Detective magazine. And tune in next week, same time, same station, for another thrilling episode of Front Page Detective on television. You're invited to be with David Chase as he again unravels a case of mystery and intrigue on Front Page Detective.